Okay. Now we have the second part, though, which is the illusory bardo of dreaming. Bardo of dream. The root text by Karmalamba says, Chima, now when the bardo of dreams appears to me, abandon the heedless, corpse-like, sleep of ignorance and settle the mind in its, net, in its natural state without distraction, recognizing dreams, practice transformation and luminosity. Um, I must not uh, simply slumber like an animal, but combine sleep with realization. This is crucial. Jima dola malum vardun char din dar tumu gror nir wa me bom jun tama yo me nilung ala jo malum zone dar jo azar jo tanor jan da nyar ma shi ni dang an sam de ben yan len ji jima da we recite that in Tibet all the time. So it's called the great liberation through hearing and the bardo in Tibetan bardo tudor chimo. This is part of the part of it, right? So bardo, the bardo of dream state covers the period of uh, uh, from from the moment we fall asleep until the moment we wake up in the morning or whenever. Um, so that's why Pardo uh, in between. Every day, Every day our mind goes into, from the state of awakening consciousness into the state of sleep and from sleep into dream. <clears throat> but, The transactions from waking to dreaming and coming back are not always uh, clear, you know. During the sleep, sometimes we have good dreams, sometimes we have bad dreams. Most the the time we don't have any dreams. Uh, people are different. So why, why we have lots of dreams? Um, in the process of falling asleep, we first experience the uh, dissolutions of five sensory perceptions into a deeper level of mind, uh, which we call the ground consciousness or alaya, right? At that point, there is a moment of, according to uh, the Pardo teachings, a uh, moment of going uh, blank. Uh, this is very similar to the experience of death. So therefore, you know, watching this process of dissolution is 
um, therefore a very beneficial practice for working with also the experience of death. Our death is very similar. I think, I mean, the going to uh, sleep uh, is very similar to death. Anyway, during sleep, we have the five perceptions dissolve into the ground consciousness, the fundamental consciousness. And then we, then we move into a dream state, right? Where another set of appearances arise due to our uh, habitual tendencies during the sort of daily life. Um, an ordinary being is someone who perceives appearances by ego cleaning and habitual tendencies. Therefore, the dream of an ordinary being is um, seemingly very solid and very real. So when we enter the bardo of dreams, um, uh, we leave this world and we experience the state in which dream occurs. When we wake up, the appearance of this world manifests for us once again. So while <clears throat> comfortably sleeping in your bed, if you have a good dreams without any uh, suffering about having a great wealth or becoming famous or having a nice time with your family. At that time, your mind feels happy. But when you wake up, it is like a, it is like a mirage, you know? There is nothing real about any of those experiences. But while you're in dreaming, everything, everything, whatever experience you have, everything is solid, is real, is, you know, like we totally believe, we enjoy it, we are happy. But when we wake up, Nothing is real. Nothing, nothing is happened, actually. Nothing, you know, is real, those uh, experience, you know. So therefore, it is called the pardo of dreaming, I think. When you are dreaming, you believe that dream is real, right? And you don't recognize it as a dream. And you... Uh, take all of your dream experience to be just as real and solid as in your uh, awakened experience. The Pardo teaching says that uh, is a sign that you are not recognizing dream and Pardo experiences. When you have a very bad dream, very scary dream, uh, sort of experience in, your, in a dream, for example, when you see um, something is very dangerous, like a poisonous snake, you, you know, even though it's a dream, right? You naturally react with fear. But you recognize for example, if you recognize it is just a dream, then the fear or 
your panic will no longer be there. Then that dream is no longer, that means that dream is no longer deluded. Then it is no longer mixed with your habitual tendencies and mental afflictions that takes things, you know, to be real. So therefore, once dreams are recognized as dreams, they can become antidotes for confusion. If we don't recognize our confusion, then uh, then you know there's further it takes you know further delusions. So Pamasambawa teaches three, I mean there are three instructions for working with the confusion of the pardo of dreaming and bring that experience onto the path of liberation. So those three uh, instructions are the um, the training in illusory bardo, illusory body, juli, in Tibet, uh, dream yoga, and luminosity yoga. Those three. If you want to recognize your dream, then you practice illusory body, dream yoga. Luminosity Yoga. There are more, but those, these, these three are very common. And all of these practices are working with the recognition of true nature mind. That's why the Kanmalangba, the root text says here, settle the mind in its natural state without distraction. So, the illusory body practice works with the appearance of, the, of, of daytime. And the dream yoga practice works with the appearance arising at nighttime in, uh, in, in your dreams. And then the luminosity yoga practice works with the state of deep sleep. So in order to train most effectively in this practice, it is important to recognize the nature of mind, or at least it is essential to understand the meaning of both you know, the appearances and emptiness the union of sort of appearances and emptiness. And when you practice with that kind of view and with that you know, understanding, you will recognize that there is an awareness that is beyond your ordinary mind. That is the true nature mind, which we usually uh, described as luminous or clarity. It is the union of emptiness and awareness. Which we also call great wisdom, right? That wisdom eliminate thoughts and emotions. When you don't recognize that awareness, then you are powerfully experiencing all this appearance as a permanent and separate from their nature. So therefore, when you train your mind 
and the practice of illusory body and dream yoga, you work specifically with um, uh, the relative appearances as a great method to recognize the nature of your mind. So I will tell you um, a little bit about how to practice the, <clears throat> the first, the, the, the illusory body first. According to Pardo teachings, uh, when you practice illusory body, first you look at your body and recognize that it is, a, it is an illusion. There is no such thing as a body, just like a dream. We believe, right? We believe in our body exists, but when you look at and investigate, it's like a dream. You should see for yourself that there is nothing permanent to be found when you think about and investigate your body. So that's also important when you recognize your body is impermanent. Uh, I'm not intellectually, but actually it's very important. Buddha said that it's not, you know, people, uh, living beings are suffering. It is, not, it is not impermanence that makes us suffer. What makes us suffering, suffer is wanting things to be permanent when they are not, okay? So one of the ways to recognize the dreamlike quality of this um, present moment of experience is to look at the experience of uh, yesterday's from the perspective of today, so to speak. When you do this, you can see that everything that happened yesterday exists now only as a memory. For example, your conversations, your actions, your thoughts, your feelings, whatever you did yesterday, do not exist anymore. And they're just memories, but we believe them, you know, permanent. They worry about or think about it or so through that understanding and recognition, uh, you remind yourself again and again, right? In every situation of your life, all of your experience like a dream, like illusion, everything is like that. That's just a between yesterday and today. But even today, this moment, there is like all the time pass, you know, pass, pass, that means doesn't exist anymore. It's just a, just a memory, but we don't believe, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a dream. So it helps, you know, like you, whether you are in a positive situation and having a great time, or you are in a negative sort of situation, have a difficult, terrible time. Yogis say, you know, 
you know, you should recognize everything is like a dream. Uh, it's it's not it's not easy, right? It's just we're we're just talking. I'm just talking, like intellectually. <laughs> So, but in according to Pardu teachings, you should remind yourself all the appearances of your present moment of experience are the illusory sort of display of mind. And their true nature is emptiness. And if you understand it completely, then you are not clinging to tightly and painfully to this life. If you understand your body is like that, like a dream, then you are not attached to your body and clinging to so painfully. That's another method to reduce attachment, which is really attachment to your body, which is really important at the moment of, um, you know, it comes, you know, death. Most people are attached to their body. It's mm -hmm. difficult to let it go. So dream yoga, uh, illusory body, practice illusory bodies. It's a, it's a, it helps you to recognize there is nothing permanent. So Buddha, from the Buddhist uh, point of view, what we are experiencing now is an illusion, like a dream. I mean, that's the great yogis, they, rec they have that kind of recognition. It's like we see things every day, the relatively, right? Relatively, relative point of view, everything exists, solid, works like that. But for the yogis, they have a recognition, all of these things are like, is like dream. Now, that's kind of like introduction of illusory body practice. For the actual practice of illusory body, there are many different stages, instructions that you need to take and practice, but there are three most important things. I'm not sure you really want to practice illusory body and all this, but just in case, I will let you know. Um, one thing is uh, you meditate on appearance and emptiness, which is cultivating the feeling that your body is like a reflection in the mirror, meaning your body appears yet empty. It's there, but it's not there. Just as the image and the mirror is an illusion, simply a reflection of light, right? In the same way, your own sort of physical form is an illusion. Everything is like images in a mirror or reflection in, in, in water. So yes, relatively you have a body, but no, it's empty. The teachings suggest that the 
that you not only remember these words, but also say them to yourself from time to time. Okay? That's first. Practice the union of appearances and emptiness. So bring that knowledge into your body, illusory body. There are much more, but okay, that's the first. The second is meditation on awareness, emptiness, which is simply watching your thoughts and observe them. When you think about the illusory body, you may have a lot of thoughts afterwards. Sometimes you get panic, right? Uncomfortableness. You know, my body is kind of like dream. It's empty. It's, il it's illusion. But when you practice, meditate on awareness emptiness, so you rest in awareness emptiness as much as you can. So then you will understand all this uh, change, you know, moment by moment, because you are observing your mind at the same time, practice illusory body. And then there's chance to recognize the nature of your body. And then the third <clears throat> is called practicing uh, pure, pure il illusory body. This is when you are working with a pure illusory body. It is connected, that means, you know, it is connected to practice of Devi Yoga with a visualization of a deity or your, your guru or whatever you choose. Once you have established this state of visualization, that is the uh, outer form of the deity. Then you dissolve the visualization into yourself. At that point, you and deity become inseparable. So whenever you see, for example, your guru as the deity, you are engaging in the practice of pure illusory body. <clears throat> um, all of these practices are actually pure illusory body practice, right? Through the practice of deity, um, deity yoga, you are training yourself to see the true nature of your mind and the true nature of appearances. Basically, you know, you are understand, sort of try to understand the truth, the truth through this different practice so that you can reduce attachment and desire, whatever. So, you know, therefore, the practice of illusory body is uh, important for the uh, natural part of this life, as well as the painful part of dying. And the two pardos after that. But, you know, 
I'm not so sure if you want to practice or not. If you do, you should learn more about it in detail with guidance, you know, from a qualified teacher. These things you can't you can practice without instructions, good instructions. And besides just the practice of illusory body, we have a second practice called the day, uh, dream yoga, right? So we're talking about uh, Pardo of dream. So training in dream yoga is the main method taught by Pama Sambhava. There are so many instructions on it. Usually when the sixth consciousness dissolve into the ground consciousness, the fundamental consciousness, then the state of sleep occurs, right? So this means that they are no longer directed out, outer world and making contact with their objects, right? So all your sense dissolve into <clears throat> Sanskrit, you know, alaya. Then there is a no connection object and subject out, outwardly. So when the time for sleep comes, you practice dream yoga, which begins with recognition of dream state. So in the root text by Karma Lamba practice for the pardo of dreaming, it says at the time during the pardo of dream, abandon the distractiveness of the uh, delusory sleep, enter into the nature of total mindfulness non-wandering, combine sleep with the realization and rest to your mind and its nature. You see, all of these practices are um, related to uh, recognition of the nature mind. So that is the best practice during the part of dreaming and dream yoga. But if you are unable to do that, recognize the nature mind. If you don't have that, then Pamasambhava's instructions say that uh, before going to sleep, you should generate bodhicitta and then visualize an enlightened being, such as, you know, Pamasambhava and whatever deity you like. You choose one and you visualize um, a lantern being, and um, for example, if you choose Pamasambhava, you visualize Pamasambhava, and at his heart center, you visualize a lotus, and then in the center of the, the, the lotus, you visualize a white A syllable, which radiates light. Um, and full in sort of your body and focus on that one pointedly without any distractions. I mean, that's you can do. When you visualize these things, it is very important to have some kind of recognition that all your visualizations are like the reflection of the moon on water. Not, there's nothing like solid, you know, permanent. That kind of recognition is very important. And as you are as you are falling asleep, then he, he says you should focus on the visualization and continue to keep your aspiration to have a lucid dream in your mind. You need that kind of keep that kind of motivation. Basically, you are making a habit, a habit, right? So during the day, for example, if you find a beautiful cup and then you think about that, oh, you love it, you bought it, you use it during the day, and then during the sleep time, you will have a dream about it because you, make a, you create strong habit. 
But that's the same thing. These visualizations, like you make a, you know, you create sort of like a strong karma, so to speak. And then you have to you have to have a sort of motivation that I'm going to meditate, uh, practice dream yoga so that I have sort of this lucid dream. And with this daily practice, when dream arises, you will become aware that you are dreaming. Then you have a chance to recognize your dreams. But, you know, dream yoga practice, of course, is not usually successful on the first night or second night. You have to do it continuously. But it's possible. So you have to repeat this practice again and again with some diligence or diligence until it becomes natural to you, which is when you are able to enter a state of lucid dreaming without a great effort. So, you know, you can practice dream yoga with the different kinds of visualizations, such as a deity, syllables, channels, um, and lights, and so on and so forth. There are so many ways you can practice dream yoga uh, according to Pamasambhava's instructions. But each individual is um, different. So experience will be individual too. Some people don't dream at all. Some people um, have uh, dreams almost every night. So whatever the case may be, you must make your own effort if you want to practice dream yoga, abandon laziness. Especially when you fall asleep, you can't have any other thoughts, worldly you know, thoughts that destroys that kind of visualizations in dream yoga. And actually there are two types of recognition, dream and luminosity, okay? Dream and luminosity. If you want to recognize just a dream, then you practice a deity, just I told you, visualizations, you know, with a light radiating and so forth. If you want to recognize the luminosity during sleep, then you need to practice Dzogchen, the great perfection. You can practice luminosity during sleep when there is no longer any difference between luminous awareness in the daytime and in sleep. Okay, now the last main method given by Pamasambhava for taking the bardo of dreaming onto the path of liberation is training in luminosity yoga. Right, so this practice is, is, is for highly realized practitioners. I cannot do it, you can probably cannot do it, but it's possible again, right? This, the luminosity yoga, who have fully realized the nature of mind, and have some familiarization 
can you know some who maintain the nature mind without destruction if you don't have the view of nature mind then this practice will not will not work D difficult doesn't work so now how do you meditate on luminosity yoga first you need to of course recognize the nature mind and you need to be engaged under the guidance of your personal gurus or whatever you call it, teachers. Then you need to practice. You look directly at the mind with the intention of observing its aspect of uh, clarity awareness until you are very, very, very familiar with it without being interrupted by any other thoughts. If you have that kind of uh, realization, actually you don't have dream, actually. You don't have a dream, so you don't need actually um, practice, you know, luminosity yoga. But it's, um, it's the instructions there, you, you who knows, you might still you have a dream. So when you practice, uh, so I'm talking about luminous to yoga, right? This luminous, whatever, nature mind is very, very short moment. You will miss it all the time, which is difficult to focus on, right? But when you practice continuously, then eventually you will be able to uh, clearly see this luminosity. When you have the capacity to maintain this practice, luminosity, then you'll be able to sustain this experience into the dream state as well. Then you will have control over your dreams. So the most important practice of this luminosity yoga is before you fall asleep, you need to generate bodhicitta combined with practice in the nature mind and of course mindfulness. If you practice nature mind and you have some level of uh, realization of nature mind and familiarity, then you will definitely recognize luminosity when you are sleeping. So, practice in Dzogchen combined with bodhicitta is so important if you have some um, already, you know, practice, you know, Dzogchen. Try to combine with bodhicitta. <laughs> When I, uh, I was with Kanchin Jigme Panso, he told us about his recognition and visions of luminosity and lucid dreaming during his sleep. Most of the time he was in a luminous state. Therefore, sometimes he received uh, important teachings, advices, instructions, sort of treasure teachings from his teachers. And um, then told us the next day. So if you're able to go to sleep with recognition of the nature mind or be in 
liminal state, then you will not, uh, according to Pardo teachings, you know, then you will not suffer from any of these Pardo experiences. Even if you, you practice lucid dreaming, teachers say that you will be able to realize that dream is not real. So it helps sort of control your dreams. This pardo is very, very interesting, right? Dream pardo. It's very interesting. So when you, you are able to maintain luminosity yoga during sleep, then the pardo of dreaming will not appear to you as an illusion. Instead, it will appear as recognition. I guess then that kind of recognition you bring into your daily life, then it helps to reduce your attachment, ignorance, so on and so forth. But you know, I usually don't practice dream yoga, so don't rely on my teaching or this, just the intellectual, you know. Um, but you, you know, I tried a few things that helps me have a healthy and good sleep, that's for sure. <laughs> I try to keep my sleep schedule try to exercise every day, avoid unhealthy food, and most important thing is try to avoid too much thinking. If you think too much, you can't sleep. Even you sleep, then you have strange dreams. <laughs> so, I mean, Always, I think from my own experience, less think, no matter what, less think. Why are we always thinking? Kind of interesting. So, And to think about bodhicitta, I try to I try to practice. You know, before I fall asleep, I pr try to practice some. You know, the Dzogchen meditation combined with bodhicitta. But most of the time, unsuccessful. So I think these practices are very effective, accurate, I think, if you want to try. So keep that in your mind when you, when you can't sleep or when you have a sort of nightmares. Sometimes people have nightmares, bad dreams. I think that is usually because many people deal with stress, anxiety, depression, and think too much every day because their work situation, family issues, health concerns, financial sort of obligations, 
these are part of everyday life that people commonly struggle with. And uh, under these situations, it's difficult to have a healthy sleep. So according to Pardu teachings, if you recognize your dreams, then when these pardos appears to you, you will recognize the appearance of pardos. Pardo experience nothing but your perception. So if you practice this kind of like the union of appearance emptiness, the nature mind with bodhicitta, the lucid dream, all of this really helps you to wake up from con confusion. And it eventually helps you can attain liberation right there. But if you don't recognize your dreams, then you will not be able to recognize the experience of pardos, according to pardo teachings. So it's very easy, right, to understand. Like if you recognize, when you have a dreams, if you have recognize your dreams, that means when you die in the after, you know, intermediate state, all this Pardo experience, you will recognize them so that you are no longer um, suffer, you know, from this Pardo experience. Okay. Um, that's kind of... Um, there are lots of different instructions how to practice dream uh, the illusory no the pardo of dreaming but um, <laughs> if you if you can't practice any of this then at least try to avoid too much thinking and keep your schedule, exercise. This will really help you uh, from my own experience, help you to have a good sleep. Once you have good sleep, then it helps your, um, your body, mentally, physically, Now, meditate for a few minutes. As I mentioned many times, first you have to establish and experience your motivation of bodhicitta and recognize this basic goodness of all sentient beings. That should be your motivation before you start your meditation. And that is very important. And with this good motivation, then you need to apply a simple, very simple discipline, which is, you know, in this case, just sit comfortably and breathe gently. Sometimes we use the mantra, Om Ah Hum. Say them silently and slowly a few times. Just kind of focus on the syllable and the sound. There's no sound, but like mental sound. 
Like when you say them in Salini. And um, just that's it, without any visualizations, just saying the mantras, focus on the on the um, uh, syllables without any visualization. It helps to open and relax your body and your mind. If you want, if you if too much, then you don't have to just. just sit comfortably, breathe gently, of course, that's important. Then watch your thoughts. Be aware of your thoughts without any opinions and ideas. If you realize that you are following your thoughts, then just be aware of that. It doesn't matter what kind of thought arises how many times your mind wanders away, just to be aware of all of that. So when your thoughts arise, just to watch them without judgment, whether they are good or bad, just to watch them. You can do that, right? When your thoughts arise, just to watch them. No judge, no judge, nothing, no good, no bad, just watch them. It's so simple. As you are aware of them and observe them, just watch them. What will happen? See it. They dissolve, disappear. But if you just follow them and thinking about them, then you make more. But just to watch, observe them, then you see what will happen to your thoughts. I think they will dissolve, dissolve and means like disappear. Or as you are aware of your first thought, then of course, the next thought will arise. And then just to watch the next thought. You don't have to worry about what happened my first thought. Whenever the next thought will arise, you just watch the next thought. And then the following thought, just to like keep going without following them. So you don't have to follow and finish the first thought. Let your thoughts arise naturally. That's what we call natural. Don't create any sort of particular thought or don't try to stop your thoughts. Just try to be natural. Maybe you don't have any thought. Your mind is very clean, very relaxed. Then just to be aware. Well, well, aware of that too. Just don't look for something special. Like, okay, what is the nature mind? Just recognition or what is the good experience, etc. Don't look for something special just to be aware of whatever is in your mind, just to be aware without any kind of aim or goal or, you know, just to be in the present moment and be natural. This is the foundation of practicing also, you know, dream yoga. When your mind is, is peaceful, relaxed, then you can practice dream yoga with uh, different kinds of visualizations if you want, such as, you know, deity, uh, syllables, your channels, your chakras, and lights, and so on and so forth. There are so many. So, if you want to practice, you know, dream yoga, first you need to, you need a good foundation, which is calm mind. And in order to have a calm mind, less thoughts, this practice is important. Do you understand? 
Just sit, just sit comfortably and then doing nothing. Observe, watching. Don't worry about who is watcher, who is watching, who is watch, you know, all this kind of like, you know, subject and object and judgment, nothing like that, just, just aware. It's amazing. The mind itself has this kind of quality. Okay? Just to watch. We're going to meditate on this simple discipline uh, for 10 minutes. Okay? I think we're done now. All right, thank you very much. That's for today. Mm, part of nature, natural part of this life, illusory part of, of dreaming. Think about that and uh, same schedule for tomorrow. I'm going to talk about meditation pardo and pardo of uh, what is it, death tomorrow. And um, thank you very much for everyone. Have a good evening and see all of you tomorrow at nine o'clock in center time.